Shalom, Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you everyone and welcome back. Everyone, do I have the video for you to watch? I have a great story that no one is speaking about and I'm going to show you the proofs and evidences of exactly what took place and what they accused our king of with evidences and proof. Remember that. I'm going to give you evidence and proof that what I say is a fact. Now everybody's always asking me, you want sources, we want sources. Where do you get your understanding from? And later, I'm going to explain to you a great understanding of where I get my source from. But I have to explain to you guys this. If your scholars and all those who are giving you the interpretations of words and activity that's going on, if your sources are corrupt, you know, you have a source, and if that source is corrupt, and down the line, different people come along, and they give you a, a, an interpretation of a story, it's also going to be corrupt and just keep getting more corrupt as we go through history. So if your source is corrupt, trust me, your storyline is corrupt. Now I'm going to give you a greater understanding of a story and you guys will understand what they did and what they accused our king Yeshua Barmarian of doing and being that caused the Judeans to crucify him on a cross. All right, are you guys ready for this? When you ask me for my source, and people out there ask me, what is your charter that you can make a claim that you are who you say that you are? I'm going to give you this understanding. So we're going to read a text. We're going to go to John 14, verse 16 and 17. So you people out there will understand where I get my sources from. In John 14, verse 16 through 17, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you so you keep asking me for sources and I give you my source and I tell you my source the world cannot accept because you can't see my source. I can see your scholar's sources. They got books, they got papers, they got this and they got that. Fine. But what I'm about to teach everyone, I'm going to use those scholarly sources that you guys have. But I'm going to add in the source that I have. And I'm going to reveal to you a great, great story. Are you guys ready for this? Are you ready for this? Let's begin. We're going to go to Mark. First, we're going to go to John chapter 8, verse 7. 
And in John chapter 8, verse 7, let's go to that, let's read that, because I want you to, get to give you a context, an understanding of what we're going to go to in Mark. So in John, John chapter 8, verse 7, there's a story in John chapter 8. Let's read John chapter 8, the story. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again unto the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery. Now let's take that word adultery and let's use the proper understanding of that word. And it's prostitution. So the woman was caught prostituting. She was a prostitute. So the Pharisees and Sardises are bringing forth a prostitute in the midst. This was a temple prostitute. And I'll get into the context of this for everyone to understand this. And they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in, a, in prostitution in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But which sayest thou? This they said, tempting him. That, now listen to this closely. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without the sin of this prostitution. Now, when you understand what is going on and you get the greater context, you understand that he is specifically, they brought a specific sin, and he has to answer about this specific sin. Tempting him to catch him in breaking the command or a law that Moses gave. So they can arrest him. And when he continued asking, they continued asking, right? They continued, hey, what do you say? Huh? What do you say? He's ignoring them. He's writing on the ground. And when he look, comes up, he says, he that is without sin among you, meaning you that is also not engaging in this sin, let him cast the first stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote to, on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted, convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So you understand the context of the story. It's very important because in the next, we're going to go to Mark chapter 14. And this whole chapter is exactly what they falsely, in the accusations of the court, falsely started bringing up false witnesses so they could convict Jesus. 
and crucify him on a cross. Now in those days, there was many cults. When I say cults, it's just like I was teaching about many cults on these YouTube channels, teaching all these different hates and Cain and Abel ways, right? And in this, many were going on in those days and they were practicing occultism, which by your understanding is hidden knowledge. It's not hidden knowledge, right? It's just, when they say occultism, hidden knowledge, they're talking about doing a way, not the way of the Lord, but doing their way, which they do and practice in order to uh, rule, oppress, um, lie, manipulate. This is the, what occultism is. You're not aware of what they're doing, manipulating you, lying to you, until you receive that hidden knowledge and then you're waked up and you're like, oh, I see what you guys are up to. Understand that true meaning of these things, everyone. Now, in this cult that is going on, now, mind you, I told you to explain to you, Jesus' stepfather, Joseph, was a member of the Sanhedrin, very prestigious mason worker who traveled all around building for the priests. And we all know that it's the priest who brought forth money. They were very rich, understand? Uh, you brought all your sin offerings. They ate well, they dressed well, rich guys using their occultism and the law of Moses, which they started to defile, to gain profit. And there you see Jesus going into the temple, making a whip and turning over all the tables and everything else, right? So something very foul, very foul is going on in this time right now. Jesus being with his father was, stepfather, and being who he was, a man that hung out with all the sinners. He had inside information. You understand me? I hang out with this prostitute. My father works as a Sanhedrin. This prostitute tells me she slept with this priest. I go to my father and I say, this woman says she has slept with this man and she has proof with her of him being there because she took something that belonged to him. Why would this be left in the possession of this woman if it is not true that this man had not also committed the same sin that they were trying to stone her for? So in this time, we have Jesus as a man who is in the midst of this craziness that's going on, the sin that's going on. A sinless man who is aware of all the foul things going on, trying to guide those that are in the sin to turn from their ways while condemning those who play as if they are innocent, yet they themselves who say, don't steal, are you stealing? Remember, he had that in his word. So remember where he is sitting, right in the midst of them. And he's very aware of it, and he's aware of everything going on. Okay? Understand that. In those days, like I was trying to tell you, so foul were these priests that the parents of people, when they stoned them and killed them, they would bring very young people, not even in puberty yet, into the temple, and they would turn these 
boys and girls into temple prostitutes. It's disgusting, I know. But it's truth that I'm going to expose and show everyone a fact that is present in our most beloved word of a truth. Hang on to your seats. It's coming. I want you to have context, though. Now, in this time period, whenever you come across in the Word of God, things like a certain woman or a certain man in the presence that Jesus is, is around, or he's going to do something for a certain man lay lame at the pool, a certain child lay sick here, Understand these words mean that there is a context in it where you will know whom it is that he is interacting with. You just are blind, you are not seen yet because no man is teaching and no man is truly guided in spirit to bring forth this word from the gospel so you can see it for your own selves. All right? So understand. Now we're going to get into Mark 14. Are you guys ready for this? Now when I make this video, I'm going to make this video, I'm going to give you evidences in it. Later I am going to be going live so I can give you greater detail. You can ask me questions, so on and so forth. But for now, I wanted to just post this video to give you evidences and proofs so I can edit and show you the words, the documentations, the Latin, the Greek, the Hebrew, all the understandings about it. So you understand that when I bring forth a source from my spirit, I will try as hard as I can Sometimes it's not there for the scholars don't have it. But I will try to bring your scholarly things that you accept because you cannot accept the spirit of truth in this world. I will try to bring your scholarly things so that at least you can accept that. If you don't accept me and my source because you cannot see it, at least accept the sources that I'm going to give you as your scholars have presented it to you yourselves. Are you ready for this, everyone? Let us begin. In Mark 14, after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Now remember, why are they seeking for this manner? Because Jesus is exposing the very teachers, the very scholars, and the very scribes of their wickedness and their hate and their false accusations and all the wicked they have been doing with the very people they are condemning under the law. These guys are practicing the same sins. Meanwhile, they live rich off of the poor, while the poor are condemned to death. Understand why they now are seeking him. But they cast not on the feast, but they said, but they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. So you see, in this time period, many, that's why said, many Galileans are following Yeshua. Judeans, not so much. Understand? The meaning between Judean and Galilean is a belief system and understanding. It's not just a tribe. Out of the Judeans, they create the Talmud and the lie, rejecting the king. From the Galilean, 
is created the Christianity and the following of the king. However, in later on in the church, the Gnostics brought forth foul doctrine that was not true at the behest of the Judeans and they bring in the money, you know, the transfer, manipulate the word, do this with the word, for we don't want the people to know the truth. We want to retain our power in that essence. So a corruption goes about to corrupt the word of God. And it spreads all the way out. So you get the Judean Jews sending out emissaries toward Arabia. You got the Christians sending out emissaries toward Arabia. And you got the Gnostics who are in the defilement of the Christian aspect sending out to Arabia. Meanwhile, majority of the Galileans have fled away from all of this and they are now hiding out in the caves and in the mountains from all of this chaos that took place after the crucifixion. By this time, this gospel truth had reached the heirs of Ketorah's children which were the Magi from the beginning. Do you understand so the Galileans, now Christians, sending missionaries out, were sending out the truth from the foundation rock, a true gospel. Meanwhile, the Gnostics tried to defile it by the bequest of the Judean Jews to corrupt it so they could mingle the seed of perversion and lies along with the truth. And the Judeans were also going out teaching Arabs the same foul doctrine that they had created. By the time they got into Muhammad's area, Muhammad being that of the flock, not of the fold, Keturahs married Ibrahim's second wife, not of Sarah's flock, but still of that fold of Abraham's seed, where the promise is given, right? they too shall be brought into the truth. And there will be one flock, one shepherd, right? So now you see, Muhammad was not Arab, not Jew. He was of Keturah's seed, a Dedanite Hashem of his tribe. And he intermarried into a woman who was part of that original Galilean Christian gospel truth of the Injil in which Muhammad called the people of the book. The Gnostics were not the people of the book. That's why when Muhammad came across the Judeans and the Gnostic Christians and the foul Arabs, he called them infidels and have no dealings with them. However, the people of the book are good and more righteous than us. This is Muhammad's words. So a Galilean is very righteous and knows the truth. If you want to get corrected and the recitation, then find one of the people of the book, a true Galilean, a true Christian, and they will guide you in proper in all things. For why? For the spirit of the comforter, the spirit of truth, resides in those groups. Now, a lot of people will try to claim that they have the spirit, and they don't. And you can clearly see the way I teach what I say. You can see the foul Judean. You can see the foul Christian. And you can see the foul Muslim. Later on, when this reaches into the land, you see that the Arabs came, tried to steal the religion of the Keturah's children. They also want inheritance with this story that Sarah said, don't allow inheritance with Isaac. So they go and they hire a Jew. So now you've got the Judeans, the Arabs, and the Gnostics all in collusion to kill Muhammad and his teaching and take it over. Right? You understand? So that's happening in this time frame and what we live that's going on now that's happening now it's been going on right and they hired a jewish woman to poison Muhammad. poison you, know, you get understanding about poison 
and medicines when I start to go into more of Mark 14. Are you ready for this? So you see the collusion? You see the murdering of the prophet Isa, the king, Yeshua, and later on, the murdering of the second one that has come, the final, which for that flock, as well they murdered. By the bequest of whom? The very Judeans who crucified the king. Now, but, uh, in chapter ver Mark 14, verse 2, But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. So the people at the time, there was groups that were following this truth, and they knew what these guys were up to, the scribes and them, how they were trying to arrest and murder and kill the king. For even the Magi had come a long time ago. Herod, Herod himself was trying to kill the king. So they've always been trying to kill the king. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper. Oh, here, Jesus hanging around another guy. That many would not hang around, even though they claim to be righteous and good. Jesus is in the house of Simon the leper. As he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spignard, very precious, and she break the box and poured it on his head. This is the prostitute that enters into the home that he had saved prior before. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor and they murmured against her. Now at this time, we have to understand, a lot of the prostitutes that were much older were the ones that were taking care of the children whose parents had died and these children were being raised as temple prostitutes within the temple itself. And a lot of these women were taking care of them. So when these guys are, are looking upon this, seeing this, they tried to use the excuse, why did you do that? You could have you'd sold that and gave that to, to help with the children, the orphans in this way, right? And back then as well, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was taking care of the children who were not being temple prostitutes. So you have this fight of snatching children and making them temple prostitutes. These are the evil, the brood of vipers, Jesus talked about. He calls them vipers, snakes, because these groups were practicing a ritual of an occultism where they were using venom and poisons to get ecstasy at high, a drug. And using these drugs, they would create euphoria, and then they would have orgies and sex orgies and different things with these children. Fact. There's proof in the literature, and any scholar out there knows I'm telling the truth. Now, there was the good Sanhedrin as well, the righteous men. Like one of them was who? Nicodemus. I saw you underneath the fig tree. Lord, how did you see me underneath the fig tree? I tell you the truth. Before you did this, I saw you, right? How can a man be born again? Enter into his mother's womb, right? Remember that, Nicodemus? And he was also working, he was high up, but he was righteous. I tell you, Jesus said, a man indeed, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. So there's a distinguish between these sects of right and good. Okay, Jesus making it very clear in the Gospels. Some of these took children and did foul things with them. Some of them protected them and brought them into their homes 
and guided them as a wali in a proper manner. And that was Miriam herself that did that good work, okay? Teaching them alphabet, ABCs, how to speak, how to be an intelligent man, woman. Meanwhile, over here, you get bad class taking on these children, they're teaching them foul manners. And Jesus' family, in this essence of the Sanhedrin, were fighting over this power and trying to save people from sin. You understand this, right? And so the woman brings in this, breaks it over his head, anoints him, and they get mad because there is some good, some bad amongst this dinner, right? And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, you may do good. You may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done to me what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burial. Verily I say unto you, whosoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the world, whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of her for a memorial of her. Now, if you want the true people of the book, a true spiritual person, the story I'm about to teach you about this woman and what I've been giving you, if you do not find this on the lips of those that teach, they do not have the spirit nor the true gospel for Jesus has said. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached, throughout the whole world. This also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. This prostitute woman turned from her ways and started trying to get the children out of the temple prostitution. So she is older than the young children. And she has been forgiven. And she has now turned from her ways. And now she is a follower of the Christ. Now she is going and trying to get those other young children to save them from these brood of vipers who are practicing this divination with viper poison and, and venom and getting high and, and doing all these drugs. And then going out to the city to murder and kill so that they can accuse falsely the adults so that they can lust in their hearts after the flesh and get more children for themselves. These are pedophiles. There is nothing new under the sun, saith Solomon. And they're doing it to this day. The world's religions don't want you to know they are practicing this crap today. So are the people in high office powers of government. They are also having rings of trafficking, human trafficking and all of this stuff. This is what they are doing. This is what they are protecting. Understand me. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. So Judas was one of those Samaritan, Palestinian, mingled, mixed men, African, white men, who was part of the twelve. Poor and very jealous and envious and he hung around prostitutes and, and, and bought them and hung with them, understand, did the things that were being practiced. And Jesus knew this. And he chose him because it states why when he chose him. He says, and I will read later and we'll get into that. 
But you hear what Jesus says about them. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad. Now I'm going to tell you, it doesn't give you a reference about what did they hear, but I'm going to tell you what they heard. In this supper meeting, Jesus was going to go, as you can see in the beginning, two days after two days was the feast of the Passover. So in two days, there's going to be a Passover. A last supper meal is going to take place in two days. And Jesus, with his 12 and other people there, are going to invite some people into the Passover. Okay, to hold the feast of the Passover. Understand that? And Judas gets wind of this. And he hears, ah, Magdalene and some children that were temple prostitutes that they had saved out of the temple are all going to be present at the Last Supper with Jesus. So all his followers. See, a lot of people think there was only 12 apostles there. But there was a feast. It's called a feast. You eat it with all your friends and family. That is the culture of the way and the truth of it. So there was going to be a lot of people there. And I'll give you proof of that. Ready? And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conven conveniently betray him. Here's a man who's, who's, who's doing the same activity as these chief priests but still also lingering around with Jesus. So he hasn't decided whether he's moving or kafar. He's bouncing back and forth. He doesn't know. He's confused. And Satan enters into his heart. And now he wants to do that money. Now he's going to betray Jesus in the manner I'm going to show you. And the first day of the unleavened bread, remember there's two days, unleavened, the Passover. And the first day of the unleavened bread, when they killed, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover. So they have their lamb, they have their stuff, they slaughter it, they do what they're doing on the day of the unleavened bread. And they're preparing for the next day to have the feast of the Passover. Okay, getting the context. And he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a certain man. Remember I said, a certain man. Bearing a pitcher of water, follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house. The master saith, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples, followers. So if you want to understand the uh, translation of the, the, the math ietes, is the pupils. So anyone who wants to learn from Jesus is a disciple in that essence. So his disciples is not just meaning the 12, but the whole group that's going to come. And he shall show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared, there make ready for us. Now why is this man a certain man to Jesus? 
because Jesus already knows this man. He also knows what this man is and was and did. And he also knows the, the family of this man. And this certain man has a certain boy who was saved by a certain woman. You following me? And later on, this very certain boy is going to appear when Judas Iscariot betrays our king. Are you ready? And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. Now, understand this. So the feast is given. The twelve show up. So, you know, you're a guest. The, the, the honorable guest always shows up last. So Jesus and the twelve are showing up. There's many people already there. The certain man that is his own place where he has, who is giving, letting Jesus hold the feast in the guest chamber. You're going to invite him, of course, right? Yes. And all the others that are following around, they are also there. But the main party guests, the hosts and the host friends, show up, understand? And he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful, and to say unto them, one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and he said unto them, it is one of the twelve. Remember, now he's saying specifically because there's a large group there. He is saying, it is one of the twelve. Specifically talking about his own inner circle now. It's one of you that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. But woe to that man whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it, remember I said, what did he say about Judas? Good were it for that man if he had never been born. Because this is a guy, he's deciding, he's moving, Kafar, he doesn't know, he's not making a decision, he's being sinful, he's being hateful, jealous, envious worshiping money, meanwhile trying to make a prestigious self for himself like the chief priests and elders were doing, showing, doing foul occultism work, but coming out in their long flowing robes, uh, greetings in marketplaces, manipulating the people, making themselves as if they're holier than thou. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, they are committing the very acts that they are condemning the people in the city of, killing them with stones. And he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good word for that man if he had never been born. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and brake it and gave to them, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Remember they used to say, Jesus John the Baptist came fasting and praying. Jesus came hanging with publicans and sinners and a wine bibber. Yet wisdom justifies her children.
And when they had sung in sung an hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Why will they be offended about Jesus this night? Because something is going to happen that the chief priest and Judas have concocted against Mary Magdalene, that prostitute, and the child of a certain man that they held the feast at, this child, this innocent boy. They saved this innocent boy that very night. They went and grabbed him out of the temple. It was that boy's father. His son was sold into the slavery. Understand this? And Mary goes and grabs him out. And takes him, snatches him out as she goes. She, she's freely to go, right? They're all sleeping with Mary Magdalene. But Mary can go and she can grab the child and save that child from this wicked thing that these brood of vipers are performing and brought him back to his father safely. Understand this? The story of this great story this woman did? This repentance that she did for what she had done? The charity work that she did to save another? You know, later on, Mary Magdalene gets stoned by these people herself. This is later on. Because the Sanhedrin, they're so angry, these priests so angry that they took their little boy from them. And they found out who did it. Judas Iscariot telling all the things about the plan of what was going to be taken out. Because remember, Galileans were revolting against the occupying Jews and Romans. <clears throat> and Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Now no one knew about the plan that was being done. But they were all going to be offended. And I'll explain. We're getting into it. But after that, I am risen. I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That this day, even in this night, Before the cock crows twice, Thou shalt deny me thrice. Because of what, is, what they did, you'll see. But he spake the more vehemently. If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee. In any wise, likewise, also said they all. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. Now this is the public park, the garden of Gethsemane, the, a public park. They all had their feasts, their wine, drinking their hymns, rejoicing that a child had been saved from prostitution. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he saith to his disciples, Set ye here while I pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. Now, a lot of people will try to say that Jesus was taking drugs or doing drugs. That's not it. Listen to me, scholars of, of the Greek and Hebrew. Jesus was not doing these things. He knew what was going to take place because he was saving a child from what they had done. And Jesus, being the all-wise person, something happened to this child 
while he was in the custody with these priests who were perverts and met pedophiles. Something happened to this child, and I'm going to show you the proof of what took place. And what Jesus had to do for the child, so he could heal the child and make him well. Because something had happened to the child, and you will see this in this text. And saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible. Now pray this wrong. It's, he fell and supplicated. That if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Now, in this context of this verse, Jesus has to do, is doing something. Remember, in prayer is an act. Supplication and prayer. So he is doing something right now for someone to help heal something that has happened. And in the garden, there you can find the plant that was necessary to perform the medicine that was needed for this thing that was going on. And I will show you. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping. Now, after he did it, and he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, thou sleepest thou, couldst not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray. Now remember, Judas is gone, and he said, hey, I know something. Jesus has, is going to a garden, and in this garden, he will be in the presence with someone doing something. And there we can catch him and falsely accuse him of the very things that the priests themselves were doing. Simon, sleepest thou? Couldst thou not watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away, and he prayed, meaning he was doing work, and spake the same words, and when he returned, he found them asleep again. For their eyes were heavy, neither wit they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately, while he yet speak, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely and as soon as he was come he goeth straightway to him and saith master master and kissed him and they laid their hands on him and took him away and one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear and jesus answered and said unto them are ye come out as against a thief now this word thief is a lestis. Lestes. And a lot of people like to call it a robber or a thief. 
But you see, unless that's this, in this work, means something else. It is the very meaning of this word is what the chief priests were doing with this child in the occult. And the people were told that Jesus was going to be at the garden with a certain young boy. But Jesus was healing this young boy from what the chief priest had done to him. For he caught something. And Jesus is in the garden three times in preparing what he had the need to do and was wrapping the bandage around the area of this child to heal him of what he had caught. Get ready, you guys. Blows your mind. And every scholar out there knows what I say is truth. For they know the scholarly word to it, the evidence and the proofs of it. Are ye come out as against a thief, as against a pedophile, with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and ye took me not. But the scripture must be fulfilled. That what scripture for he was counted among those that did bad things. Yet he was not them. And they all forsook him and fled. For now the apostles realize what is going on. Holy shit. And they all forsake him in this manner. Unaware because of what the people are accusing him of. They were asleep. They had no idea what was going on in this garden when Mary Magdalene had brought the child to get healed of the STD that had been caught. And they, and they all forsook him and fled. And there following him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body and the young men laid hold on him and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked so they tried to recapture the little boy but the little boy this time got away and he fled naked but he had a linen cloth wrapped around his private area because he had caught syphilis and if you look at these words in the Greek, it means a purpleness. So the word linen cloth here is sendon, sendone. And it is used in medicine, everyone. It is a linen that dresses for wounds. It's that kind of linen. And it is soaked in the medicine and wrapped around whatever is the infection. Jesus was doing this. And the young men laid hold of him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. And Peter followed him afar off, even unto the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priest and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. So they had already concocted all these things, trying to accuse Jesus of things that the chief priests were doing. These people were coming out saying, oh, I saw him there, I saw him here, but none of their testimony agreed together.
And there arose certain, there arose certain, and bare false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. Now you have to understand, they're leaving out the other details of why he was even arrested. What was this naked child doing with Jesus, so on and so forth? Why were there a group of people there to come with them? Not just soldiers, but a group coming out as if he was some kind of pedophile man. And the town was gathering them together with pitchforks to come after this guy. You understand? And the high priest stood up in the midst. Well... And asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou any nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man setting on the right hand of power and coming in with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy, what think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him, and to cover his face, and to buffet him, and to say unto him, Prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch and the cock crew. And a maid saw him again and said to them that stood, this is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after. So you have to understand the context of what there's being said. Oh, Jesus is around in the garden with three other men and a little boy and a prostitute woman. We know what they're doing because they're just, there is a, an occult going on in the temple where they were using the snake venom and other medicines and drugs that were creating intoxications and different things. This is all known, scholarly known. But no one teaches this. And that's why I say even today, within your religions and churches, that's why you see these men in Roman Catholicism and in Islam and in Judaism, where they go around, they say, it's okay to marry little children and have sex with underage people. They openly say this. And then you have our own governments coming out saying there is a great human trafficking ring where they're stealing children and even our own leaders are involved in it. Our own leaders have names on the jets of Epstein flying around with everyone covering it up. There's nothing new under the sun what these dirty, filthy, rotten people are doing. And they've been doing it because of, of different things where you get the puzzle pieces of their belief of their cult of why they're doing it and he denied it again and a little after they stood by said again to Peter surely thou art one of them for thou art a Galilean and thy speech agreeeth thereto but he began to curse and to swear saying I know not this man of whom ye speak. So a Galilean Judean, there's a difference. So now, now he starts to curse because most of the time they weren't even cussing. So you see, that's something I struggle with cussing. Right? And I am a Galilean. And I struggle with this. A good Galilean, there's many people better than me of Israel. And they don't cuss. Trust me. Way better than I am. I do not know why I have been blessed with any of what I am. I am a sinner, understand? But there are ones that are very good, good Galilean. They don't even cuss. Man. So Peter, hearing upon this, what does he start to do? He starts to swear, saying, I fucking don't know this motherfucker of whom ye fucking speak. 
And the second time the cock crew and Peter called to mind the word. That Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. So here is the true story of what Judas Iscariot and the high priest had concocted with the elders and the scribes of the city to make a false accusation having to do with prostitution. Mary Magdalene's story should be told of what she did that she saved this innocent man of the certain man of where he had this Passover. And we're healing this boy of the STD. Here's the STD, got syphilis. It's purple. It can cause bad infection. And your private turned purple. Here it is. And in the garden, there was a plant known as sassafras. And of this plant, you can extract it and, and give a cure for syphilis. Even the kings and queens in later times would be catching rampant syphilis. And in America, this plant grew abundantly. That is one of the reasons that the English colonials came here to kill the natives and steal this plant so that they could take it back to their lands and heal all of their fucking perverted ass leaders who were sleeping around, mingling their races together, doing all of this sickness. Think about it. You allowing in the assembly of the people perversion on TV, perversion in music, perversion left and right and all this shit, and you call yourselves leaders. Who is it that legislates the laws that make these things possible to be acceptable in the assembly of our nation? How dare you corrupt the minds of our children? And every father should heed the story of Mary Magdalene and this boy and the certain man that had the Passover held at his house and take heed to this story and turn your hearts back towards them and understand what these rich and powerful have been doing in our legislation by allowing this sick perversion to go on in our nation and stop it in its tracks once and for all. Who out there is teaching this gospel story the way that I have? Who out there knows that in the living of our society, this goes on so my story is a spirit of truth? And I give you your scholarly evidences of these words and the meanings of them so you know the storyline of the context is facts. Since you don't want to believe that I have a spirit of truth and am guided in a manner to be able to look at stories and to see them for what they are. I am not a man who knows these words of meanings and I don't speak Greek. I don't speak these things. But I speak the language that everyone can understand, English. And I'm passionate and zealous for the truth. So if you cannot accept the spirit that is within me, for which the world cannot accept, at least accept the scholarly proofs that I give you here, that I do not lie.
So that is a great story of understanding for you guys now. And I have many other truths along with these stories and things that Jesus performed as what you would call miracles were indeed wisdom and knowledge that he had. Like I said, I will go live and we can discuss these stories. I just want to make this video to give you full context, full understanding, full truths. And because a lot of people, where's your sources? Where's your sources? Where's your sources? Since they don't accept me as just me. <laughs> All right, my friends. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you.